The James Webb Space Telescope has discovered a lot of amazing things, and today we're going to discuss another one of them. Even though the James Webb Space Telescope has just recently started carrying out science operations, it has already made several remarkable discoveries. For example, the presence of silicate clouds in the atmosphere of the brown dwarf VHS 1256-1257b has been confirmed by the James Webb Space Telescope. This finding represents a significant turning point in our understanding of the structure of failed stars. What is the brown dwarf and what does this discovery help us understand? Stick around as we explore the galaxy through the James Webb Telescope's eyes. The James Webb Telescope has helped astronomers to discover a previously unknown cold brown dwarf and it is said that the mass of this brown dwarf exceeds the mass of Jupiter by 19 times. Brown dwarfs are objects with masses between 13 and 80 times that of Jupiter. They are situated halfway between large planets and stars. They used to be referred to as failed stars because their mass is insufficient for permanent fusion reactions based on hydrogen atoms to start in their cores. However, unlike planets, some deuterium and lithium nuclear processes can still take place inside brown dwarfs. Nevertheless, by astronomical standards, they are very brief and the brown dwarfs quickly begin to cool down. Because deuterium can fuse at lower temperatures and pressures than hydrogen, brown dwarfs might be thought of as light stars. This implies that brown dwarfs produce their own heat and light, unlike exoplanets. Obviously, it is far lower than that of stars, but we can directly observe it, especially in the infrared wavelengths where JWST excels. How were these objects first discovered? On November the 3rd, 2018, Dan Kasseldin was up late playing the game Counter-Strike when he made astronomical history. What he did was that he would immediately turn on his laptop to verify the status of an automated search he was conducting of NASA Space Telescope images after dying in the game. In the wee hours of the morning, something strange suddenly appeared. It was quite perplexing, Kasseldin said. It was moving faster than anything I've discovered. It was faint and fast, which made it very weird. As part of the Backyard Worlds Planet 9 project, Kasseldin wrote an email to the astronomer he was working with. They recognized they were looking at something utterly odd after ruling out the chance that it was an image artifact, an incredibly faint object that was 50 light years away and hurtling across the galaxy at 200 kilometers per second. It was given the name WISE 1534-1043, but because of its unique qualities and accidental finding, it quickly acquired the nickname The Accident. Astronomers now think that what Kasseldin found was a brown dwarf, a failed star with insufficient mass to initiate nuclear fusion in its core. It takes the shape of a star. The temperature of brown dwarfs vary widely as well. The hottest have surface temperatures of roughly 2000 degrees Celsius, about the temperature of a candle flame, while the coolest have surface temperatures of less than 200 degrees. Brown dwarfs will eventually drop to these lower temperatures over billions of years since they lack their own source of heat. Subdwarfs, which blur the line between planets and brown dwarfs even further, can be even colder. The temperature of an object known as WISE 0855-0714 is below freezing. It is the coldest object we have discovered outside of our solar system. The discovery emphasizes that these perplexing yet enigmatic substances come in a variety of flavors, and categorizing them into narrowly defined groups is not an easy endeavor, like so many other phenomena in our universe. Kasseldin, in the meantime, hopes that he'll be able to advance the subject in the future by focusing on comparable things now that he is aware of what to look for. He said, I want to find another accident, and I don't want that to happen by accident. Up until now, we weren't sure of what a brown dwarf might look like up close, but astronomer Jill Tata in 1975 proposed that they are likely not brown despite their name. Now thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we have more information that will surely lead to groundbreaking discoveries. The recently found JWST brown dwarf was discovered during the Through the Looking Glass project, which looked at the nebula Abel 2744. Glass JWST BD1 was given as its designation. 
glass JWST BD1 is situated between 1850 and 2350 light years away from the Earth, perpendicular to the Milky Way's plane. It most likely makes up the galactic halo. The object has a mass that is 19 times greater than that of Jupiter and is believed to be 5 billion years old. JWST estimates that the effective surface temperature of glass JWST BD1 is only 330 degrees Celsius. As a result, it belongs to the T spectral class, which is rather uncommon. Despite the fact that many brown dwarfs have been found so far, T dwarfs are relatively uncommon. Only about 400 of these objects have been found so far. And now, we have definitive proof that this brown dwarf contains rock clouds thanks to fresh discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. According to a global team of scientists, the telescope has directly found silicate clouds in the atmosphere of a brown dwarf. This is the first time such a discovery has been made in a planetary mass companion outside the solar system. The observations were made by a team led by astronomer Brittany Miles of the University of California, Santa Cruz, and come from the brown dwarf VHS 1256-1257b, which was first reported in 2015. It is located around 72 light years away. It has an atmosphere that is reddish in color, is relatively young, and has a mass that is around 19 times that of Jupiter. The scientists used infrared spectra to attempt to determine the composition of the brown dwarf because this hue has previously been attributed to clouds in newborn brown dwarfs. This is possible because various substances absorb and re-emit light at various wavelengths. Scientists can identify the elements that create darker and lighter features in the spectrum by looking for them. The study discovered that VHS 1256-1257b's atmosphere makeup was comparable to other brown dwarfs investigated at infrared wavelengths but significantly clearer. Based on comparisons with template brown dwarf spectra, chemical opacities and atmospheric models, water, methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sodium and potassium are found in a number of regions of the JWST spectrum. Researchers discovered that silicate particles are what make up the cloud that the James Webb telescope found. They also observed that the clouds were layered heavily. They imply that some of the minerals, such as enstatite, quartz, or forstatite, is presumably what the clouds are made of. The researchers emphasized that their findings support predictions that brown dwarfs can be surrounded by dusty clouds, which, they say, can affect their brightness. They come to the conclusion that the JWST is an important step in the direction of a more thorough investigation of things like exoplanets and brown dwarfs. Brown dwarfs serve as a link between stars and planets, providing insight into both. The transition between the largest brown dwarfs and the smallest stars at the upper end of the mass scale can help us understand how nuclear fusion begins. According to Nolan Greaves of the University of Geneva in Switzerland, a material needs to achieve core temperatures of about 3 million degrees Celsius to begin nuclear fusion which starts a chain reaction that transforms hydrogen into helium. However, it is unclear exactly how much mass is required for that to occur and when a brown dwarf turns into a star. But it's safe to say that we're closer now than we were when Cassaldon first discovered the brown dwarfs by mistake. What do you think about this new discovery?